So, <laughs> um, what we are looking here is in the, uh, one of the sort of poster child regions of this boundary, the National Water and Energy Resource Conflict, and that's really related, uh, or that's really the region of Central Asia. Central Asia, these basins, these are the dominant uh, two big basins in Central Asia. This is the Sudaria catchment, Amudaria catchment. Um, runoff is generated on the, the basin is uh, shared. These basins are shared by Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan. So that's six countries which share these resources. And the uh, conflict is um, intensifying efforts uh, or over the allocation of water for hydropower production and water for irrigation purposes. Uh, has been intensified the conflict um, ever since there was uh, the demise of the Soviet Union, actually, and then um, in 2008 there was a big drought, actually, um, producing a lot of problems in the region. And uh, during that time there was also this, this uh, internationally agreed upon framework for sharing the resources was falling apart, and now the parties try to assemble it again and try to make the best out of this conflict situation. And actually. <coughs> Most of the water is generated in upstream republics, that's Tajikistan and Kyrgyzstan. Okay. Uh, but these countries are very hydrocarbon poor, whereas the downstream, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan, they're very hydrocarbon rich but water poor. Okay. Yet downstream has the land to produce all these irrigated crops, which is very water demanding. So this is sort of the set of situation and we set out to ask ourselves a very simple question. What will be climate impacts in that region? And what we need is a couple of climate um, a lump, um, the conceptual rainfall runoff model um, together, where we also represent it apart from snow storage, unsaturated snow storage, groundwater storage, also the land ice. So we also threw in more than 5,100 uh, glacier water bodies into the system, and then let the, hydrolog the hydrological <coughs> and the ice system be driven by temperature precipitation forecast as derived from GCM output. We use then statistical downscaling to uh, come up with an uh, adequate representation of uh, some uh, pre likely precipitation temperature development in the region. And what we did is really um, uh, the statistical downscaling approach. We took into account the trend, the climate trend. We took into account the, the decadal to multi-decadal variability, put the possible variabilities in scenarios, as well as then the seasonality of the climatology in that region. So that's a unique downscaling approach which we developed for the work, which is uh, in itself very interesting. And, uh, you can see tomorrow on the post. <laughs> anyway, the three most important things are, or results are, there has been a lot of talk as, uh, with regard to um, the impacts of the vanishing or melting glaciers in these uh, big river basins which flow off the Tibetan Plateau. In this river basin, the glacier melt will continue over the next 40 years. We likely or we expect to see a sort of under an A2 scenario, warming scenario. We expect to see a loss of 60 cubic kilometers of land ice. That translates into roughly 50 meter cube per second of uh, additional runoff from uh, glacier mill, which is only two to three percent really of total contribution to runoff of an undisturbed uh, hydrological system. So the glaciers are no game changer. And all this talk, you know, that the, glaciers, the vanishing glaciers will lead to a total aridification of the region, it's not substantiated by uh, the best of science we can, we can do. The second point, which is really important point, is that we are expecting to see changes in the seasonality of the runoff. So, from a system, from the present system of a late spring, early summer runoff uh, system, we expect the runoff to shift into a late winter, early spring season runoff. So, up to 30 to 60 days, where also less water is stored as snow in the winter, so we have a more fluvial um, uh, runoff system. And obviously, this can cause problems in the downstream where you can't store the early runoff intermittently in storage, in man-made storage. Right? So, the unregulated catchments of these catchments, in the, so sub-catchments in the Sudania River Basin, um, 
they have to be somehow serviced, uh, or it has to be made sure that um, the lacking irrigation water, the irrigation season water, can be provided by alternative means. So then you have to construct the, the uh, new season storage in the region. Okay? So that's um, uh, the second important point. The third important point is as glaciers are retreating, the glacial length is shrinking, and you leave behind moraines in the terrain. These moraines can trap melt water behind them, and this is unstable terrain. And if you have such a, a dam burst, a moraine, moraine dam burst, you might have glacial lake upper, which can very locally um, wreak havoc uh, in the downstream if you happen to live along uh, a stream which is affected by a uh, lake outburst. So these are the three most important points which we found with our scientific investigation. There is ample of time for adaptation uh, in to climate change. There will be most probably no existing uh, dramatic changes. Um, however, with this kind of uh, better understanding of what is going to happen in a spatio-temporal, uh, very explicit spatio-temporal way, we can actually uh, gain a better idea of how to uh, prepare the decision makers for what that is to come.